إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمره ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يدل الله فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة في البدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيبنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن اهتدى بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما المؤمنون إخوة فأصلحوا بين أخويكم واتقوا الله لعلكم ترحمون وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تباغضوا ولا تحاسدوا ولا تدابروا وكونوا عباد الله إخوانا ولا يحل لمسلم أن يهجر أن يهجر أحر أخاه فوق ثلاث أما بعد All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send our shukr, our thanks, and our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we direct our praises to Him because He's deserving of all praises. We remind ourselves that today we are sitting here to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's only by a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are able to be here to be in obedience to Him. On this day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the world, on this day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam, on this day that Adam alayhi salam was sent to this earth, and on this day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring this world to an end. So we send our shukr and our thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our salam and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his family, his companions, and upon all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. My dear brothers and sisters, today, I would like to share with us a reminder on a very important relationship. And this relationship is the closest relationship and bond that can take place between two people during their course of the, the course of their lifetime. As believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is paramount, this relationship is mentioned in the Quran, it's mentioned in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is fundamentally one of the most important characteristics of this ummah that serve towards the success of this ummah. And that is of brotherhood. All the relationship between father and his children is much stronger than that of brotherhood. And relationship between husbands and wives and family might be stronger than this. This relationship trans transcends the bonds of blood. This relationship transcends the, blood, the bonds of just liking someone. Why? 
because this relationship is based on Ibadullah and the servants of Allah fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and following the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as taught to us by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the only relationship that is a complete manifestation of strong unity, love and affection and one that exists between two people who are living an equal plane on the surface of this earth. And it overlooks all the things that divides us. Whether our status in life, whether our wealth, the color of our skin, the language that we speak, whatever it is that, uh, it is that divides us, the concept of brotherhood in Islam overlooks all of this and unites us all. All of this is encapsulated under this umbrella that united over one billion people in this world when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Innam al ikhwah. Without a doubt, verily, all the believers are but one brothers. So, what is the brotherhood in Islam? What is this Islamic brotherhood? Now, the Islamic brotherhood is not something that is political in nature. It is not something based on our whims and fantasies. And why am I saying this? When something is political in nature, it takes a sense of people working together to fulfill a common goal that holds for that time. It is something temporary. If we all want to build a country, and we all have the same goal of building a country, then we will work together until that goal is achieved. After that goal is achieved, no longer will this working together be of any worth to us. So we're going to find another goal that we would like to align ourselves with and we'll go that way. When we're working in our communities and when we, when we say we are together because of our race or because of our nationality, that too changes as our alliance changes based on different circumstances in our life. So when we mention that the believers are but one brotherhood, this is not all of mankind, this is specifically for the people who testify La ilaha illallah who testify that they believe in Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last and final messenger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all one brother unto another, unto another as sisters unto another why? because our goals and objectives will never ever change not from the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nor until the last person who testified to believe in Allah because our objective is for the unity of this ummah. Our objective is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our objective is to look out for one another. And those objectives will never change based on the basis of belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is why this is a special relationship. My dear brothers, this point and sisters, this point is very much encapsulated by a poem in which a person was saying, he said, the importance of unity of the ummah is like this. He said, picture, picture a dam that is built to supply electricity. When that dam is built, what does it cause to happen? It causes many rivers and many lakes and many streams, many individual parts to come together. And as it comes together, it builds a large lake a very powerful thing and from that powerful thing that is behind that wall we're able to generate so much energy so much electricity so much benefit so too is the brotherhood in Islam that each individual by themselves they might have some potential they might have some gift and you might have one and you might have one and you might have one individually if we all try to just do something by ourselves Will we accomplish that goal of generating tremendous amount of electricity and do tremendous good? You alone stand up against an army. Will that be possible for you to be victorious? Versus you with the ummah, with the brotherhood, with strength, with togetherness, where all of your good come together and overcome all of your weaknesses. That is the essence of ikhwan, of, of the ukhuwa in Islam. This was the essence in which Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he built this ummah upon that the sahabas would run alayhim 
in the early days of Islam, most of them were from among the poorest of people. They were from among the slaves. They were from among the the downtrodden in life. As well as some of them were from the hierarchy of society. And Islam united this ummah in those early days. And they faced hardship, but they faced it together. They faced tribulations, but they faced it together. And bi ni'matillah, by the blessings of Allah, and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on the basis of ukhuwa, they were able to establish Islam on the face of this earth. So in this poem, this author, he says, the goal of union and coalition is to gather the powers. Since when drops of water gather, they form a powerful river. Nothing comes about from a drop, however the river runs strong. Any benefit that can be imagined comes from, come, can, comes from that river. A fish can never be seen in a single drop of water. How is it then from the river whales can come out? A loaf of bread can never be made from a single head of wheat. But when gathered together and trashed, it brings out all of its prosperity. It is impossible for individuals one by one to take on a great task. However, from uniting together, anything that is desired can be accomplished. Unity and conciliation can be seen in a way that the ants gather together. In the words of the Sheikh, glory is strong and captive and temporary. However, when separation occurs to a community that is together, they just become like stories of the people of the past. My dear brothers and sisters, what I want to end up this, this topic of what is Islamic Brotherhood before I move on is beautiful said in the Quranic ayah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The believing men and women are allies unto one another. Al mu'minuna wal mu'minatu ba'adukum awliya ba'ad. That the believers, brothers, men and women, are allies unto one another. They enjoy what is right and forbid what is wrong. And establish prayer and give charity and obey Allah and His Messenger. And Allah will have mercy upon them for Allah is mighty and the wise. This is the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are brothers, we are allies unto one another. We enjoin that is good. Amr bi ma'roof wa nahu wa al-munkar. And we forbid that which is evil. And this is the essence of our brotherhood. There are certain things that help to foster the Muslim brotherhood. And it is mentioned in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the ayah that I mentioned in the introduction. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the believers are but brothers. So make reconciliation between your brothers and fear Allah that you may receive his mercy. This is telling us that the strongest level of brotherhood is a sense of community, friendship and common purpose in Islam for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At this level, the believers work together towards fulfilling the goals of the religion and living in a state of divine values. Not the values that we might concoct in our minds, not the values that we might think might grant us success. Rather, values that are divinely sent to us, that we all follow when following Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعٌ وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold firm unto the robe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not become divided. Remember the favor of Allah upon you when you were enemies and brought your hearts together and you became brothers by His favor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about the levels of brotherhood that purify the heart of all animosity, hatred and malice, because we cannot be brothers unto one another, when we hold these things in our heart. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us in the Quran the beautiful dua. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Yaquluna Rabbana ghfir lana wal ikhwanina alladhina sabakuna bil iman. Wala taj'al fi qulubina ghilla lilladhina amanu Rabbana innaka raufur Rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us, Say, Say, our Lord, forgive us and our brothers who preceded us in faith and put not into our hearts any resentment, any ghilla, anything that might cause animosity between ourselves towards those who have faith. Our Lord, you are kind and merciful. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, he reported the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, 
He said, and this is the hadith I mentioned earlier, he said, do not hate each other. Do not envy each other. Do not turn away from each other. But rather be servants of Allah as brothers. It is not lawful for a Muslim to boycott his brother for more than three days. I will repeat that last part. It is not lawful for a Muslim to boycott his brother for more than three days. Ibn Rajab al-Hambali rahimah alayhi in the explanation of this he said, the best of deeds is to secure the heart from every type of enmity. The best of deeds is to secure the heart from every type of enmity. And the best of it is to secure it from the enmity of the people of desires and heretical innovations that challenge the righteous predecessors of this nation. So not only should we protect our harsh enmity between our Muslim brothers, but let not cause the innovative matters of people of the past to come into this religion and divide us as we see something very prevalent today. Very prevalent today we find the people of bid'ah, the people of innovative matters are injected into this religion, into our community, into our society. And our Muslim brothers and sisters, subhanAllah, we are divided on that level. He continued saying, thereafter following that which is secure the heart, which is to secure the heart for enmity against the Muslims in general, is to intend good for them. Is to intend good for them. So part of securing your heart for enmity from another Muslim or for another Muslim is to desire good for them. This is part of securing your heart from enmity with them and serve good counsel and to love what they love for himself as the Prophet Sallallahu said none of you truly believe until you love for your brother what you love for yourself it is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said the example of the believers in their affection mercy and compassion for each other is that of a body when any limb aches the entire body reacts with sleeplessness and fever this is how Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described among Muslims. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he continued saying in another hadith, he said, No Muslim servant supplicates for his brother behind his back, but the angel says, and for you the same. Earlier we heard our uh, brother Ayyad, he was mentioning about our brothers and sisters in Haiti, in Afghanistan, and in many other places in the world. We are in a state that the most we can do sometimes or that we think we can do is to give some monetary help to them. You know, give something in charity, which is great, alhamdulillah. But let us not forget them in our dua. Let us not forget them in our dua. Alhamdulillah, bi ni'matillah, by the mercy of Allah, at least us who are living here in this country, we're enjoying privileges that most people around the world, they don't have. Or they cannot even conceive that as being a normal life. As much as we think the difficulties that we are facing here, subhanAllah, you need to go and see the difficulties of those people. Because when we see the difficulties that they are facing, especially if we call ourselves brothers unto one another, and our sisters unto one another, how many of us would know that our own brother, our own blood brother or sister, is in one of those lands facing this challenge? How much will you do to help them? How much will you go? How far will you go to help them? As much, just as much should we make that effort to go help our Muslim brothers and sisters who are presently in that situation. And the least we can do is to make dua for them. That's the least we can do. Let us ask ourselves for a moment. Do we even remember our brothers and sisters in our dua? Do we think about their states? Do we share their, do, do we empathize with them? Let us take heed, my dear brothers and sisters. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, he mentioned, he said, it is not allowed for a Muslim who hears a word from his brother to assume evil of him if he can find something good about him. And this is the part that I'm moving into the things that destroys our Muslim brotherhood. Umar radiallahu an, he says, if you hear something about your Muslim brother, something bad, Something that might cause you to think bad about them. Do not allow that to taint your perception of them if you know anything good about them. Are you telling me, uh, is there any person in the face of the earth that you can't find a single good about them? Imagine if we live our life by this principle. Imagine that. 
Do you think we will find animosity in our hearts towards each other and hatred? Some of the things that destroys brotherhood, jealousy and envy. And when, we talk, when I'm using the term brotherhood, I'm using it as an Arabic expression, ukhuwa, which refers to both brothers and sisters. Sorry, I didn't make that clear earlier. So among the things that destroys brotherhood is jealousy and envy. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith, he mentioned that jealousy or envy, it burns away iman, it eats up your iman as fire eats up wood. It takes it away. Backbiting and slandering in Surah Al-Hajarat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained to us, do not backbite one another. For the person who backbites, when you're backbiting someone, it is like eating the dead flesh of your brother. Slandering. The difference between backbiting and slandering is backbiting or speaking something about someone behind their back that which they would not like. Whether it is good or bad, whether it is true or not. However, slandering is even worse. Is when you speak about someone things that are lies upon them. And that is even worse. Are you going to tell me someone is slandering you? Is it okay to be friends with them? Are you going to be comfortable around them anymore? Selfishness. Thinking about yourself, don't think about others. This is the opposite of brotherhood. Incapable leaders. And this goes back to the point when we mention about the people of, uh, the people of innovation into our, into our religion. When we have leaders who have the proper knowledge of Islam and lack of understanding of Islam and very little iman, then how do we expect them to lead our ummah into righteousness and goodness and to be people who enjoy that which is right and forbid that which is wrong? These are the people who when they know something about someone and as leaders many times you are privy to information about others, they use it against that person and it causes disunity in our community. Tribalism and racism. Now we might not see that so much in America. Tribalism and racism, we see that every day. Right? But it still exists until today in many parts, especially in many parts of the Muslim world, where they're segregated and divided based on their tribes. Right in Queens, New York, here in Richmond Hill, New York, how many different masajid don't we see being identified Oh, I'm a, this is a Guyanese masjid, this is a, a Syrian masjid, this is a Yemeni masjid, this is a Bengali masjid, this is an Indian masjid or Pakistani masjid and so forth. Is that the way we're supposed to be? Are we fighting against racism when we are inherently practicing racism? These are among the things that destroys the brotherhood in Islam. So it is classism. You go to a place, you go in the environment of Muslims, and people of a certain class, certain level of society, they're going to hang out by themselves. While the poor people, while the people on the lower level, or the perceived lower level, are going to be by themselves and segregated from others. Oh, you can't come and sit on this table here with these brothers. You got to go elsewhere. This was never from the teachings of Islam. And these are the subtle little things that we do that helps to degrade and reduce the value of this religion. Pride and arrogance, all of these are tied together. Lack of Iman, as I mentioned earlier. Suspicion, very important. As it is, as the, the, the saying of Umar radiallahu an that I mentioned earlier. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that if a fasiq, if a someone of known bad character comes to you with some news, then Verify it. Verify it. Now that is different if a Muslim of, of character and honor and dignity, he comes to you with something that may be beneficial to you, not necessarily to speak evil of someone. It is different. But at the end of the day, my dear brothers and sisters, let us remove suspicion from our heart by verifying matters. Verify matters for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we'll close off with the most important reason for the destruction of our ukhuwa. And this is the concept of an alert enemy. Since in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa there were people 
that always try to destroy this religion, that always try to degrade this religion, and they try to attack the roots of this religion. Since in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and it is happening until today, and they continue to struggle to cut the root of this religion, the strength of this religion, and what is that? Our brother. It is a story that in the time when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the Sahaba they were in Medina, that one day a group of the Sahaba, the Ansar, the people who were from Medina and the Muhajirun, they were all sitting together, all Muslims having a good time. Now prior to Islam, the, the non-Jewish Arabs that were living in Medina, they had many tribal issues and many battles and these things ran, ran deeply within them. Islam came and united them and they overlooked all of that. But this Jewish guy by the name of Ais, he came and he wanted to, you know, disrupt this status quo, this, this peace that he was seeing for many reasons. So he started reminding them, hey, you remember what they tried did to you guys? You remember what this happened? I remember how many people you guys lost in this battle? And he started reminding them of past ill feelings among each other. And these were sahabas of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And among themselves, they started getting all riled up again. Because this reignited this old wounds. Until Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had to come and put a stop to this. And remind them what Islam came to do. And the reason why I'm telling you this, you will find people, and this is the greatest enemy of destroying our ukhuwa. And, and extensively, extendedly our religion. You will find people who are going to come and deliberately inject into your hearts animosity towards one another. A lot of times it comes from the disbelievers. A lot of times it comes from the disbelievers. All right? And you will not even realize it. And sometimes from among the people who claim to be Muslims as well, they will come and deliberately try to inject in your heart animosity for another person, evil for another person. That in, as time goes by, it's going to rip you apart and destroy the brotherhood that we have. This is the act of shaitan, my dear brothers and sisters. This is the act of shaitan, my dear brothers and sisters. And let us beware of this. I will close with a hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, whoever would love to be delivered from hellfire and enter into paradise, then let him die with faith in Allah on the last day and let him treat people how he would love to be treated. Again, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, let him treat people the way he would love to be treated. This is hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I hope that everything that I remind us about today, it can be encapsulated by this simple statement. By this simple statement, all of it, we can find by this simple statement. Treat others the way you would love to be treated. And bi ni'matillah, by the help of Allah, by the mercy of Allah, we will all be a strong unit of brothers in Islam. We will be people who will help one another, who will look out for one another, protect each other. And by that, we will, grant, we will gain the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's so much more on this concept of brotherhood that we could learn. But by help of Allah, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us and protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant in our hearts iman and taqwa and love for each other. May Allah protect our love for each other from all that seeks to destroy it. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect this ummah and expand the brotherhood of Islam to all those who believe. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be people who are merciful to all of mankind in general. I mean, aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah hali wa lakum wa akhiru da'wani alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wa mursaleen, Habibina wa nabiyina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een, wa man ihtada bi ihsanin ila yawmiddin amma ba'd. 
اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم انصر الإسلام المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم أعز الإسلام المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر إخواننا في أفغانستان وفي سوريا وفي يمن وفي أراق وفي فلسطين وفي كل مكان اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعمل متقبلا اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من عذاب القبر ومن عذاب الجحنم ومن فتنة المحيا وممات ومن شر فتنة المسيح الدجال اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغناء اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار آمين برحمتك يا رحم الراحمين عباد الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله يذكركم واستعينوا يستجب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أكبر وأقيموا الصلاة